Hello students, welcome to Lai Excellence. Welcome to the 56th weekly Maxim. I just want to tell you sorry because it is delayed and as I was not well, I couldn't do these things on time. Now, within next 2 to 3 days, you will receive all the Maxims. Along with this, the India yearbook pending videos will also be released. And May 15th, you are going to get Geography Through Maps videos. Fine guys, so let's quickly get into what is the important things in this particular week. As and when prelims approaches, certain events become important for you. Something like President Ramnath Kovind releases commemorative coins on Nabakkalebar festival. I don't know how exactly you pronounce it because the festivals, local languages, it changes from place to place. So when you look at this, high possibility you may get a question. Why? As and when exam is near, these events are highlighted and they will be very much attractive for the examiners to give questions. So something of this sort may be asked first important thing you need to know about the festival second important thing is about the denominations this is this can be a factual error that can be made so on rupees 10 and rupees 1000 they have released this particular festival okay commemorative coins has been released so what exactly is this it is an ancient ritual associated with the Jagannath temples. You might have heard of Puri Jagannath temples. Yes, in that memory, they actually perform this particular ritual and that particular festival has been released in the form of commemorative coins. A year with an extra Ashada Masa month as per Hindu calendar is considered auspicious for conducting the ceremony. This usually occurs every 12 to 19 years. Here you should know they are conducting it not once in 12 years. But it depends upon the extra Ashada month that would be celebrated. I told you once in 12 years you get the festival of Jains in Shravanabhilavala. That is important. This is happening after 12 to 19 years. So again this will become important for you. Right? The deities are made from a special type of neem wood known as Daru Brahma. Very, very important. These type of things may be simply asked. The most recent ceremony was 2015. Not now. Not now. But as the coins were released, there can be a question about this. This festival is celebrated at the Jagannatha temple in Puri, Odisha. Very, very important. Right, guys? So next, let's take the next issue. Elections in Karnataka has actually begun and because of this you might have heard of a news about a particular community by name Lingayats. So whenever there is elections in Haryana, UP, Rajasthan, different communities comes into picture and government never asks you or UPSC never asks you anything of that sort. But when we look at this particular issue, Lingayats, you should be aware of a particular dominant community which has actually fought against the caste system and other issues. And when we look at the Prime Minister Modi's speech in London as well, he was actually talking about Basavanna, 12th century social reformer who is considered as God by many of his disciples actually fought against the caste system and now the Congress government in Karnataka want to call them as a separate religion rather than making them part of Hinduism. Within this there is some other community by name Veera Shaivas where they worship Shiva and Veera Shaivas are actually considered to be Hindus itself 
whereas when we are talking about lingayats they are considered as not part of the religion by the congress government so here bjp and other parties say that you are planning to divide us whereas congress is saying that we are trying to give what they were requesting from long time but the central government has not given any commitment or they have not accepted this forget about all this let's look from the upsc point of view now when i see upsc what is this important or what we should focus the focus should be about the 12th century reformer basavanna right the second important thing is you should know that he has constructed anubhava mandapa so my suggestion is for prelims try to read about basavanna and lingayats separately in internet even wikipedia is fine some information about this may be beneficial apart from this nothing else is required politics will never be asked is that fine so if this is clear let's quickly move to another issue from prelims point of view a particular painting saura painting has got its significance of where not only indian people but also other countries are planning to purchase this and it has got its popularity now what is this painting it is actually called as edital and the person who draws it is known as editalamar where it is believed that the people draw sketches to appease the ancestors and deities if they don't appease then there is a possibility that they may get diseases and where do these people live they live in korapat and ganjam districts of the state of orissa and in neighboring parts of andhra pradesh especially the shrikakulam district very very important next they depend upon land and forest for their subsistence and they usually follow shifting cultivation so one thing saura paintings where they live odisha and andhra pradesh and what are their paintings edital all these are important the new program launched by government of india especially niti aayog to ensure that you get role model schools and role model states in school education they have planned to operate from 2018 to 2020 and the program is known as sustainable action for transforming human capital in education which are the three states jharkhand madhya pradesh and odisha now this is the major plan okay now who is doing it niti aayog is doing along with other knowledge partners especially the boston consulting group and the piramal foundation for education leadership fine now after this sustainable action for transforming human capital in education what does it mean it tries to transform both elementary and secondary school education remember upsc may give you only elementary at that time you should be careful road map refers to a time bound goal driven exercise that will reach its logical culmination by the end of the academic year 2020 that is we have to see what is achieved in 2020 you cannot say that like you know education means we cannot do the calculations we cannot know that okay immediately you have you will get results and because of this reason many governments are postponing the calculations and other stuff but under this by 2020 you should be in a position to study whether it is working or not and results have to be shown within this short period of time and it is based on formal agreements with states and it will be funded through a cost sharing mechanism between niti aayog and the participating states is it fine so it's not completely central sponsored it will be shared by both center and the state government the boston consulting group and perimal foundation for education leadership 
were chosen i told you these were the knowledge partners right so guys if you can see till here that should be enough in current affairs session i have already talked about different military exercises varuna is a naval exercise between india and france yes so if you know that it is in between these two that should be enough now if they ask specifically about this particular one it began in arabian sea of the goa coast it would be conducted in three seas that is arabian sea bay of bengal and south western indian ocean it will include anti submarine right air defense and asymmetric engagement exercise mostly aimed at defensive technologies then the indian naval participation will include the destroyer mumbai frigate trikand with their integral helicopters in submarine calvary p81 and dornier maritime patrol aircraft as well as the mig 29k aircraft fighter not required these are these two is important this is not so if you look at this both sites had started this right since 1993 have been conducting joint but since 2001 these exercises has named varuna 15 editions of the exercises have been done till date 18 months it's a year okay and then when you look at this the exercise came after the french president macron's visit to india right and this will help both the navies to work together in future as well when you look at the last important thing that is Supreme Court has actually said that SC ST act has been misused. It is used for blackmailing, extortion and many other things. Should we be bothered about this? Very very important because like multiple articles have come about this particular issue. But I would suggest guys from prelims point of view you won't get any question. Maybe from mains point of view you may get a question. and if you have to know what will be the question and answer we have to wait for a few more days that is again the government has sent a review petition and on the basis of the review petition you may get another judgment and that judgment will become important so my suggestion to you is don't waste time on this as of now once the review petition is finalized and court gives judgment you read it if the court doesn't give judgment at that time anyways we will be having these classes again at that time i will tell you what are the recent updates as of now it is an issue so just look at this as an issue and know that this has occurred but you should know when to read it properly fine so let's move to the next area the next issue which is actually important from mains point of view especially sa point of view is 60 higher educational institutions are granted autonomy now when you look at this particular thing what is the meaning of higher education getting autonomy that means they are not under ugc within ugc they would be granted some autonomy where they can have more colleges they can have their own research and development they can ask or recruit some foreign faculties they may also get some foreign students and they can invest in those areas of interest for example if you take engineering colleges ps college in bangalore became autonomous and that particular college actually helped india to get its name especially in space when they brought a satellite which was launched by the isro itself now what is the meaning of these things whenever you give autonomy then they may bring the best things available in the market and they can develop at the same time it can't be completely autonomous and if you have to choose whether this institution is eligible for autonomy then they have to have certain criteria that is they should ensure some high standards there should be some equipments and others which are of world class quality and they should be in a position to compete if that is not there then there is huge problem where 
the entire system can be misused so as an ombudsman there is a need for ugc to be present and guarding these people at the same time what we should actually do here is whenever we find best colleges they should be given autonomous so that we are in a position to ensure that the higher education in india is in the right direction the sate program is actually associated with elementary once you cover this and move in the private sector reforms or if you have to see higher education then this is mandatory in the budget as well the central government had actually given a nod for ayushman bharat yes under this there are two initiatives that have been accepted one is health and wellness center so in the national health policy the government had talked about health and wellness centers as the foundation of india's health system where they said that they are planning for 1.5 lakh centers for health care system closer to the homes of the people it will focus on two things one is preventive another one will be focused on spreading awareness as well the second important program national health protection scheme it's an insurance scheme where it provides coverage to 10 crore people especially vulnerable families providing coverage up to 5 lakh rupees per family per year for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization not for primary care because primary care is free so they are looking for secondary and tertiary care is it fine then the funds will be released by central government right so these are the issues that you need to see so one is national health protection scheme another one is the centers i had already explained you about the office of profit issue and all there is no need to read about this much because the question will be about office of profit which we have already seen now the delhi high court has said that election commission you have to reconsider it first define office of profit take all the things into consideration and then you can go ahead so because of that as i told you then the issue office of profit is very very important so try to read it what is this office of profit as we have already seen whenever there is conflict of interest between the role of the mlas and mps where they don't know whether they have to work as mlas or they have to work as executive then this question comes into picture recently science congress was held in manipur so some facts that you need to know with respect to prelims are what is the theme reaching the unreached through science and technology how science and technology can be used to ensure that we can reach to the poorest of the poor second important thing is in this you will also have women science congress it is the seventh women science congress where the first one was held in 2012 and when you look at this science congress what exactly is this indian science congress association it is a premier scientific organization started in 1914 in kolkata very very important now it owes its origin to the foresight and initiative of two british chemists namely simonson and macmohan it occurred to them that scientific research in india might be stimulated if an annual meeting of research workers somewhat on the lines of british association could be arranged so they actually try to help and promote the cause of science in india they hold annual congress and try to publish proceedings journals transactions and other things to secure and manage funds and endowments for the promotion of science including the rights of disposing of or selling all of any portion of the properties so here guys you should be able to understand all these are actually aimed at ensuring that awareness is spread 
and the people are going to work with others and whatever new innovations they have and whenever they come there and present it then if others are observing it if any additions are required they will provide and even if companies can be made part of it then what happens then this can be made commercial as well so funding is also required whenever you think of r&d so for all those things this will be beneficial whenever we look at economy and whenever we talk about the manufacturing sector and its measurement what we usually get to know is about the index of industrial production correct but there is another thing which is less known known as the pmi that is purchasing managers index now when you look what is the difference between these two iip is actually given by the government whereas pmi is given by the private sector survey iip focuses mostly on the output whereas pmi focuses on the purchasing or the input stage now when you try to calculate with the help of these two then it will be very very beneficial for us to get an overview and exact picture of manufacturing in india and the other factors that we need to consider whenever we look at this are both pmi and iip are based on the surveys and hence represent only a sample of the entire manufacturing process so you can't trust anything yes and the negative is as with the p iip the pmi suffers from the lacuna of not measuring informal sector activity much so when you don't calculate informal sector especially in a country like india where informal sector contributes largely small like you know when you talk micro not everything is under this and the recent economic survey clearly tells you that gst has ensured that like you know voluntarily new people have come into this net and they have voluntarily disclosed so some data were not available for us for calculation and all so even though india's manufacturing is good but as we are not in a position to get proper data sometimes there is problem so now when we look at this particular picture pmi may be asked in prelims where they may ask you what is the difference between pmi and iip who calculates pmi and what are the main things that you consider next issue is actually about india joining europe's satellite data sharing pool now what exactly is this when we look at isro it will have some agreements with europe us nasa or any other space agency and we try to get their data and they are going to get our data right so now when we look at this in from india they are planning to give ocean sat to megatropix scatsat 1 saral insat 3d 3dr all this we are planning to give whereas they will provide us the information from the copernicus up so what exactly is this this is a new name for global monitoring for environment and security program and it is an initiative of the european commission which is conducting it with the partnership of european space agency and esa coordinates the delivery of data from upwards of 30 satellites the ec acting on behalf of the european union is responsible for the overall initiative setting requirements and managing the services right guys and now when we look at this sentinel it is developing a new family of satellites called sentinels specifically for the operational needs of the copernicus program the sentinels will provide a unique set of observations starting with all weather day and night radar images so not required guys they won't ask you at all maximum what they can ask you is copernicus is associated with which agency that it is european space agency it has agreement with what india isro this can be asked next most important thing already asked in upsc is about the hearth hour 2018 where the madhya pradesh chief minister has held meeting in candlelight 
where he has also tried to participate to create awareness initially it started in australia 2007 by wild world wide fund where the main aim was to create awareness now it has become a global event it is celebrated on march 24th from 8:30 to 9:30 right so the main motto is give up to give back that is certain things we have to give up like using plastics fossil fuels right giving up lonely car rides for employees so try to send multiple people to gather give up e waste all these when we do these are all aimed at creating awareness if you can know that that should be enough no need to go in detail rest is all about the historical facts that is given here fine but not so important for me what is important who is doing it what is the theme that should be enough fine where it started first so guys many students are actually asking us to extend the deadline by one month definitely we will extend even if the software doesn't permit you send it through mail after your prelims exam we will evaluate the questions and send it to you because this is a peak time and we understand that you need time to prepare thank you guys thanks for watching the other video will also be launched soon so within next 4 5 days you will get all the videos extremely sorry for the delay thank you thanks for watching